Good evening. Welcome to the University of Utah Guest Writer Series. Uh, I'm Alan Borst, the administrator of the reading series here at the U. Before we begin our event with Douglas Kearney, we want to acknowledge that this land upon which the university is located and which is named for the Ute tribe is a traditional and ancestral homeland of the Shoshone, Paiute, Goshute, and Ute tribes. The University of Utah recognizes and respects the enduring relationship that exists between many indigenous peoples and their traditional homelands. We respect the sovereign relationship between tribes, states, and the federal government, and we affirm the University of Utah's commitment to a partnership with Native nations and urban Indian communities through research, education, and community outreach activity. The Guest Writer Series is supported by the University of Utah's Department of English and the Office of the Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs. Guest Writer Series has received funding from Salt Lake County Zoo Arts and Parks and Utah Humanities, which empowers groups and individuals to improve their communities through active engagement in the humanities. The series is also supported in part by Utah Arts and Museums with funding from the State of Utah and the National Endowment for the Arts. I'd also like to thank our hosts this evening, Salt Lake City Arts Council uh, here at Finch Lane Gallery. Uh, lastly, I wanna make sure that you all know the King's English Bookshop is here with us with copies of Douglas Kearney's latest book for purchase and a fresh signature. Um, I also wanna point out that tomorrow at noon in 3870 Linko, English department folk will know where that is, uh, we'll be having a colloquium pizza, conversation, and the like uh, with Doug Kearney tomorrow. I also want to alert you to an upcoming event next week. I'm happy to announce that the Department of English is hosting Ling Ma. She'll be doing a reading on Thursday uh, and a book signing at 7 p.m. next week uh, in Siciliano, uh, in the Gardner Commons at the Siciliano Auditorium. Uh, we'll send out more information about that on Monday morning. So without further ado, I'd like to invite Lindsay Webb who will introduce Douglas Kearney. Thank you. The word tone, as it applies to poetry, has always been tricky for me. Poets often use it to mean register or mood, sarcasm, for instance, or playfulness. And when poets speak of tone, we often prioritize consistency. Douglas Kearney, however, is more concerned with multiplicity of tone, a fecundity of tone, so that every word and every mood seems to contain a shadow of its cousins, sometimes even its opposite. The word tone also is a musical word, especially used to describe those instruments animated by the breath. The human voice, for instance, or the saxophone can express certain tones, which are often idiosyncratic to the performer. In revisiting Kearney's work for this introduction, I was struck as I always am by his tonal genius, not merely the tightrope walk of being funny and serious at the same time, but also by the unshakable presence of the human voice. Kearney's devotion to this human voice and to its many modes of play across tones, vernaculars, and puns is resolutely political. Against the common tendency to see play and protest as opposites, his poems insist on their relationship in the face of environmental destruction and racist police culture in America. Victoria Chang, writing in the LA Review of Books, says, quote, for Kearney, play equals confrontation. I'm very glad for the chance to hear these poems in his own voice tonight. Douglas Kearney has published seven books, most recently Show, a National Book Award, Pan American, and Minnesota Book Award finalist. Buck Studies is the winner of the Theodore Rethke Memorial po Poetry Award, the CLMP Firecracker Award for Poetry, and Silver Medalist for the California Book Award. He has received a Whiting Writers Award, a Foundation for Contemporary Arts Cy Twombly Award for Poetry, residencies and fellowships from Kaveh Kahnem, the Rauschenberg Foundation, and others. A Howard University and CalArts alum, Kearney teaches creative writing at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, where he is a McKnight Presidential Fellow. Born in Brooklyn, raised in Altadena, California, he lives with his family in St. Paul. Please join me in welcoming him. <laughs> That was 
thank you very much. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And the best thing about a really thoughtful and generous uh, introduction is it makes you feel like, shit, now I got to work. <laughs> um, so, so I guess I should make it worth your while to come back. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I want to thank all the people who have been hosting me here, um, guiding me around. You know, uh, it's, you know, Sean, Paisley, Aaron. Uh, there's so many people who I should probably be remembering. My brain is not giving them to me now. Um, but I thank you all for being here, and I thank everybody who's given me a recommendation on a place to eat and, you know, like things like that. Um, it's great to be back here again. I'm going to start with the title poem from show. There's a couple of things I want to say about, about it. So first of all, the course that I'm teaching here with the grad students is a course called Pattern Constraint and Sound. And that is a course in which the students create new poetic forms. Um, and so show, the title poem, is actually the product of one of those, uh, one of those forms that was created by students, a student back in 2018. Um, Indigo Weller created a form called a torsion. A torsion is kind of a modification of a sestina, um, which students will recognize me saying sestina is like the most asshole game of horse <laughs> that like madrigals would like be doing. Which I was like, oh yeah, well what about a sestina? Oh shit, With the envoy and everything. Yeah, man, the envoy and everything. Yeah, okay, all right, cool. I'll flip the tell you talk. But that's what it is, right? Um, so a torsion uh, is a modification of a sestina, but the patterns. That, that, dis that discern where the poem, where the uh, words will recur are based on a lace weaving pattern. Um, and that's because Indigo Weller, I believe his grandfather, used to work in a lace weaving factory. So this poem's called Show, and it's about what happens when you are asked to perform something that you don't want to perform. Some need somebody or more to ape sweat on some site. Bloody pearl or dirty spit Hopped up for to show who gets eaten. Rig, body up, bow, bow, to breeze a lace jig, and sway to Griggs good fiddling. Pine deep, dusk, a spot where stood body. Thus they clap when I mount bonk, jig up the lectern, bow to say it's all good. <laughs> we gathered, withstood the bends of dives deep, brr, darker, they clap as I get down, sweat. Highlights my body, how meats died bloody. Look fresher for show wing. I got deep spit out my mouth, a rit jid red rind, bloody melon, ha, no sweat. Joking, nobody knows the trouble. Rig full of day of show, while I fix this mess. Spit in tragedy's good eye. This one's called chick goggler's then bow housefully. They clap, be misunderstood. Hang notes high or deep, make my tongue a bow. What's the gift? My good song box, the gift! Jig, gull, nickels from deep down my craw. They clap, I so jolly stood on that bank. Body picked over blood, E, Rato, Braxton, sweat, E, brow syndrome, spit out of sax bell, rig on the grocery show. A feels the show, sweat equals work, but a bloody ink pot of body. I stay nib dip, show never run dry, rig, durously I spit out stress feet, lines jig, ha, 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 ha. Good one that I is bow deep, but not outstood. Shining dim, they clap. Waves slapping hulls deep. Don't mean sunken goods, not yummy. Right bow, blanch with foam, jig jigs. This one's called they clap. Nigga wheel barrow so much deep ends upon dead niggas stood. I on that bloody rise a sweet body. There you is too sweat. It lets they clap. Rick, right? Some ass, post, spit, to lip. I said, show. Hydration is important. <laughs> All right, so there's, so one of my favorite, um, a, 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 a prefix that I love to kind of, I do basically like, I love to like hate say, um, this prefix is post, right? Post, so you put post. And, and it's always interesting to me because like the people who want to say something is post are usually the people who feel most like, 
like scroll, like like kind of, you know, like uh, like if this is still happening, then I'm kind of responsible. So it's post. It's over. Can we move on? Right. And so in 2008. <laughs> A whole group of people in the United States decided to play a massive prank on the rest of the country, and they nominated and elected Barack Obama to be president. <laughs> twice. You fell for it twice. Oh my God. But the best thing about Barack Obama becoming president um, was that it meant that we were over racism. Racism was done, right? Right? Because, you know, like, it's not like, Racist people ever let black people run anything before, like a household or like a plantation or like, like, like a bear with other black people. No, 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 no. It never happened before. So the fact that now we had somebody in this uh, esteemed and august position meant that we were now post race. So in 2008, I decided to write a poem called The Post. And I have to say it like that because there's a hyphen after post, but there's nothing there. So it's just the post. So say it with me, say it with me, say it with me. So it's not the post, it's the post. All right, one, one, two, three, the post. There we are, there we are, there it is, there it is. Now if you're like in super high elevation, doing that can make you dizzy, but we're okay here. All right, so the post. Pulled free my skin at its linchpin for to be post. At last I am pink meat sitting at the desktop, typing things to do with my obsolete rap. One. Bungee jump from sturdy limbs of southern trees. Two, bundle it for laundering with jockey silks and handkerchiefs. Three, double dutch with Harlemites on Malcolm X. Four, trade it in for right to work at harbor-based auction blocks. Five, six, seven, eight, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and also that. Have you seen my lustrous skin? I mistook what she stroked for saran. Her handbag Yorkie tugged it down, shucked her hips like stripped bikinis. Her pink beneath, she seemed not to notice, was just as new as a white potus. <laughs> Wind lifts my old skin, strolls it tipsy down the street. A black and white trawls the curb, sees and flashes lights, then remembers when we are and pulls off. My skin is quite the pip, lingering by shop glass without appetite. America's different now, isn't it? The circling birds are tracing hugs, yes. They want us all inside, there. A pink child flies my skin, a kite. Look, mommy, they said, and mommy did. See how high it can go, mommy said. America is so different now, yes. <laughs> how many can fit in one skin? The pronoun for citizens, us or them. Skinless now, as I've become, the rich air agitates the pink. Gone so far, cleaving skins to ticker tape. The winners, a parade for them next. From us, for sure. Best collect the litter when all is thin. Once marching ends, we'll need lofted again. All right, so this next perm. Um, so like, one of the things that, um, well, well, I'm just gonna read this. So this, this next poem is called Buck. Right? My previous book was called Buck Studies. That's a segue. Pro tip, like you can connect your books over time. Like you can do this. It's like a crossfade. In fact, in fact, and because you all are paying a lot of money for me to be here, this is not bragging. This is just demonstrating that your investment was good. So this book is called Patter. And in the front, because when you design your own books, you get to do shit like this. The ants on the cover are seen carrying in words. What are these words from? They're the last line of the previous book, which was about, the last poem in that book was about infertility and fertility struggles, and Patter's mostly concerned with that. So I'm just saying, like, segue, pro tip, poets. And consumers, if your poets that you're buying books from are not doing segues, like, maybe write them a letter, an email or something. Don't put, don't make it a tweet. Don't make it a tweet. All of those things are coming back. And all the things you felt so good about saying that time at two in the morning. Whew. When your blood's all angried up from something. So I'm gonna read this poem, Buck. Um, uh, and it, it, I think it kind of reveals itself as we go. Buck. 
Seems some want some body bodied into street sweet meat. Come and go get it. We may not fight it, but you'd like us to, to. Tool cocked back to make a no way way you kick yourself in us. Umber husked, our dirty look a dirty talk, begging for the something strong in your dom palm what smokes after you doing it. You order us scream the shut up. You ever never hanker for surrender, so the hard cuff, rough or thick licks, such a hurry look. Don't sweat, don't fret. You've ever done this before. Just fudge, we're not real. Too dark here to tell. Let's roll. They were fondling for my piece and finger banging a cash box, peeped through the convenient ballistic glass and face lumped, asked out long till they popped the juice came out them once their sig resisted to lunge shivish fit to shoot shot while their woofers woofed their thick trap beats, you said, and wanted us in buck, so buck us good. We'll buck up after by candlelight, flower petals, and we shall, we shall, like fucking champs, we, oh, you're some machine, ain't you just all up in it, so we got to be down up to here. This next poem is aspirational. Um, whenever, uh, it's like whenever some black person manages to find themselves in front of some bullets that were gonna be just going anywhere, right? But like, no, it's like, it's like that athletic urge in black people. It's like, something's flying, gotta catch it, you know? And so like, oh shit, caught it right here. Why receivers? That's why that position matters so much, because we're so fucking good at catching shit, especially when we're running, especially when the ref wants us to come back. I said come back, they throw the bullet. It's just an accident. These things happen. But it's funny. Every time something like that happens, for like a day or two, the news is like, oh my god, this is an outpouring of, what was it that Martin Luther King said about what riots? This is the long arc of history. Yes, this is, oh my gosh, look at this. The people are, boom. So that's like the first day or two. But then like clockwork, what happens is America shows itself again and goes, why are they burning a CVS? Why are they looting those places? It's the most hilarious thing in the world to talk about looting on stolen land. <laughs> so I want to be aspirational here because maybe if I were like full of cell phone chargers, two liter sodas, Tylenol, people might take a day and a half longer to mourn me. Property values. I aspire to be a CVS Lord. I want to be a drugstore in my heart or a nice neighborhood, a rapless gas up into my heart, a legit ballot. I perspire all night at it. That my sweat, alchemical, of shit makes gold factual. Consider spent plantation dirt, arena turf, recording booth. What transmogrifies these sans my properties? If it could, it should have been bottled. Me, I transude this solvent, sun up to you know when, then turn up as you know what. When it come time for one time to calm or gun sunshine through us been crying hues, mustn't the copper figure where it's heart full of mouthwash, hair care products, and miscellaneous cheap electronics, I'd serve, protect. Lord, my escalators would all descend and all for sale would glisten. So, you know, like, I appreciate what you said about political. But you know, sometimes people just want to dance. <laughs> and you know, one of the ways in which uh, black cultural production enters the mainstream marketplace 
is through a genre of song called the brand new dance. Right? So you have these songs where it's sort of like, oh, come on, baby, let's do the twist, like that kind of thing. And suddenly it's like, oh my, they're doing the twist. I guess we should. <laughs> and so like that happens. Um, so I just decided that as an avant-garde poet, which I clearly am, um, that I should kind of tap into this to make it, you know, my, my poetry more hospitable. To, not y'all, y'all are here with me with this, but like some people, oh, People in Shelbyville, yeah? <laughs> Simpsons reference, nice. Um, anyway, so y'all with me, but I'm just gonna do a couple of, of brand new dance poems. This one's called Do the Backseat Jam. Right, so let's do the Backseat Jam. <clears throat> Stop there, fam, and jump to the brand spanking. Back again, you know how it go. Throw your hands in the air with the lights on. Maestro, raise the baton and swing till you feel it. The beat was taking over the street to the club. When I say you, say ah! It thumps, let me see those hands, all the people in the big quiet. Get down on the floor like you know, this will be the short shot. Hit sweat through your clothes. You ought to, you got to, you better, you ever put your hands. Get ready for the, you ain't ready for, you got to listen up just as easy as falling off a countdown. Three, do it till it's done to the two, the ones in blue. Show them what you said to do to the zeros in brown, to the back, to the back. Now you're right in the jam. confrontational political poetry that may be slightly elliptical. Read a lyric poem about grief. This will get the audience back on your side and thinking you're human again because you're doing a very relatable emotion. One of the things that many people come to poetry for is to see a sort of an amplified sadness that will help them feel their sadness. So now, I think what I'm gonna read right now is a poem called uh, um, Almost, Almost, Almost Gone. And so Almost Gone um, is a poem uh, about, in some ways, about my late parents. My, my mother died in 1995, and my father died in 2017, leaving my brother and myself as kind of like the last people in that household. Um, this poem references a couple of things that, you know, you'd go to the back of the poem book and be like, oh, that's what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, but one of the things is um, in Altadena, like two houses, two or three houses from where our house is, there's this long strip of Diodora, Diodora plant, uh, trees, these huge trees. And every year they hang Christmas lights in them um, and it's Christmas tree lane, and then that's what they do. Um, this poem also references um, a, a very um, popular spiritual slash folk song, Mother, Sometimes I Feel Like a Motherless Child. Um, and specifically, it also names two very important people, uh, three very important people, uh, Nina Simone, um, Odetta, um, and uh, what else am I thinking about? Um, now we'll keep it with Nina Simone and Odetta, and then Zora Neale Hurston are also mentioned in this. All right, almost gone. I wish I knew how not to know either my brother or I'll bury the other. Father, Mother, dust variations, ill, encore, spun once more. Sometimes I feel like I'm not a simile. While motherless child's first verse unreals, child goes gone, the second. An eagle in the air, I never hear Odetta do. Just motherless doubled to onto almost gone. Someone's recording something ever. Is her eagle down somewhere? A needle drops. Sometimes I feel bird and sky an antithesis to Nina's. This dialectical, this is taxidermy. One's mounting's freedom, others delore. A motherless child's a long way from home already, already, whether Odetta's Birmingham or our Diodar needle Dina for freedom or never mind. Will to adorn, Zora goes. Double descriptive, I go low down in plain pine. I'll go down many versions. Some dolorous moaning binds verses motherless to almost, almost some sideways. Like if my brother's almost an eagle in the air, air I am, he'd have me have him burned, almost gone. He would have me loose his ashes, almost deodar needles, on Santa Rosa, near the old house, all the high tall cedars, though I'm a long way from home, crows crowd the forfeit sky. That poem ends with the bird in it. 
So let's make the transition that feels professional. <laughs> that bird in the last poem was a crow. So this next poem is called Black Flight. Because of, okay, so like crows are. <laughs> Black Flight. Came, I was way out as it flies, but an easy green in skies isn't it? My cold to end is a nice, though it's, the li it's like the knot I keep my knickers in, to hey there, stay here. Damn right, I'd rather not squat some pissy asphalt, not plot, not, rather put them up where I got to pick it in self-defense? Not no, but if so, then where'd I roost my hoodie among cooing polyphony? A no-go, a no-no, unless I'm turning me around. Awful's everywhere I was. I couldn't see me there. Only pinions. I've eyefuls of my absence everywhere. I'm here I go, hey there, I call now and mow and mow and mow. All right. So I have like, what, about six, six and a half hours left? <laughs> All right. Um, so, so I'm just going to grab the books and just start just reading them straight at you uh, as an aggressive move. Um, so, so at the same time that I wrote um, the post, um, I wrote another poem because I was in this like space where I was like, oh, what we're gonna do is, and you know, I have students um, who are learning um, ekphrastic poetry right now, and one of the approaches to ekphrasis that I, I propose to them, you know, like poems about typically visual art, but you know, 2022, so all, all of the arts, come on in, gifs included, right? That, that works too. Um, uh, and one of the things we talk about is like stretching the, the body of a poem over the armature of another uh, structure of work, right? And something that I say a lot of times in my class um, because it sounded really good and I've been saying it over and over and now I'm just like, yeah, that's true, um, <laughs> is that there's something important distinction between form and structure, right? So form, you're finding out how much of what kind. That's what form does. How many lines, all right? 39 if you're doing Sestina. What kind? Oh, I am big pentameter if you're doing a, a sonnet. You know, so it's how much? So how many rhymes? Oh, this many rhymes because they go like this. What kind of rhymes? Oh, they have to be perfect rhymes. Oh no, they have to be uh, what they call false rhymes because they have to be actual repetition. So like, it's like it's all that stuff, right? So for a little while I was thinking about stretching poems over like the generic essay form that we all learned in like fourth grade, which is like intro, three body paragraphs, and then a conclusion, right? <laughs> Right now, John Degada is someplace going like, oh, no! Um, but yeah, that's an essay. If you're not doing that, I don't know what you're doing. You're just writing shit. <laughs> Five paragraphs. Like, I look at dissertations. I'm like, why are all these paragraph breaks in here? Nobody taught these people how to write an essay. It's very sad. A lot of the people in here are TAs. So I don't know why y'all chuckling. This is your job. <laughs> Get these, some of y'all going for PhDs, let me tell you, this is what your teachers are not gonna tell you. <laughs> the moment you have more than five paragraphs, they're already starting to dock points. <laughs> you want that fellowship? You want a, a kitchen or, or, a, or a bench at the University of Utah named after you? Five paragraphs for that dissertation, stretched over 200 or so pages. <laughs> and. And you, and you know what? When we think about all of those ancient texts that we all like fetishize now, the handwriting in them was really small. So I suggest making it six point type, um, something like Euro style, because it just all just gonna disappear in just rows of lines. And they're gonna look at them and go, there are 200 pages of six point type Euro style in five paragraphs. I am not worthy to assess this. Just name a bench after them on the campus. <laughs> that bit of advice was free. They're not, out, they're not allowed to tell you that because then everybody would have benches named after them. And they'd have to spend so much more money on benches and engraving. All right, so this poem was written at the same time as the post, and this poem is called, it was originally called The Shootout. Oh, one more pro tip, yeah, so like, when I decided that the shootout was gonna go into a book called Show, I was like, oh shit, what kind of, the show down. Oh my God, now it looks like it was on purpose. All revision is, is the ability to convince the reader that you knew what the last word of the text was gonna be when you wrote the first word. 
That's what revision, that's, that's literally what revision is. Convincing your reader that, oh shit, this all came out as like a plastic object of text. That's what you're revising toward. That's the only thing. So think about that also when you're working on your dissertations. <laughs> anyway, this is the showdown. And then I'm probably gonna read one more poem after this because I spent a lot of time just talking to y'all. Um, and you know, that happens. All right, the showdown. Is guns given druthers of meaning or being? The old town looks empty, save for chattering, lace, palling, pains, awaiting murder. To see saltpeter all, even the birds, dizzying down washpan dusk, buzzards, God's finger. Now one gun desires meaning. This is for, and sputters. That's the gun what wins. The other? There's God's index, carnal, wrecking, a sunken cheek. If the gun reckoned what it was, would it speak? Could it whisper, not meaning nothing by it? In this panoramic utterance of dust, round these parts the rotten cusses won't carry their own infants, their hands set at what they ain't. To have been gun at duel, to serve one simply, to cry out then only, by be judged by spans of silence. The cinematic gun kills only acting out itself. The cinematic gun, a spook mask, gibbous skin and fixed rubber fangs. For the cinematic gun, discharging beyond magazine, capacity is bug-eyed, bucking, but not kicking accuracy, cock-eyed is for the cinematic gun, kind of cooning. See the cinematic gun, take the gun virgin's hand when the murderous goon searching rounds the debris where the gun virgin trembles. Lousy, lousy goon gushes curlicued corn syrup, die. See the gun virgin drop the empty cinematic gun, smoky barrel, floorward. What it, when it lands here, I loves every creature everywhere. As we cut here, that's all. And how will your lead ball express? Boomed flint pistol. I fixed light, but no ball. Zotted laser gun. Cool. Level. They nodded there, over old fields still scars, as the blood and ashes slurried in low places. And if the gun abets the bullet, magazined, chambered, let out, thus a projected sense of further and further of farther and farther until careened or ricocheted, till a silk screened T-shirt, dark face, a sunrise, a sunset, the blocks sawed off days, walker, driver, further, farther, shopper, corner, bystander, automatic gun, near too fast to have been, but not so fast as to be meaningless. Needful, omnivorous gun, farther and further, certain weather, all you desperate guns, waiting to speak, and then, What are you doing, Doug? Oh, this is brand new dance. I mean, that looks kind of funky. What, what's it called? <sighs> it's called the six foot jump down. What? <laughs> yeah, the six foot jump down. That's crazy. I want to learn how to do the six foot jump down. <laughs> Why you, uh, that's weird. <laughs> Dude, it's not like, it's just tell me what, what's funny. <laughs> Everybody does the six foot jump down, eventually. <laughs> Back with the dusty how we get it in till the cut it loose just like mama done it all the way live and direct you dead on it like pops hit the floor to that old gritty sound is spinning in the party. Get low people in the groove, somebody scream. The rhythm rock till the lights go dark. Can't feel the tempo, better lay it back. Easy when the horns blow, you know the time. Dig it, then you're gonna break down. Show them what you got, nobody still standing up against the wall. Last call, all y'all, you beef. The beef fate to my beef in black don't wave. Your hands at the top, crisscross, look alive. Um, and I think I'll end. Um, all right, so let me give y'all an option. Choices, now you're complicit, now you're participating. <laughs> so um, the choices are, I could read a poem about an orgy in a choir loft during Sunday service.
Or I could read a poem that proposes that eros, E-R-O-S, is not an appropriate term or concept to equate to uh, black touch and sensuality because of the slave trade. So I could do one, I could do fire, choir orgy. I could do eros, E-R-R-O-S, or fuck it, let's have it all. I could do both. I don't even know. I can come on, y'all. Like, like, we run this right now. So, you know, since they're kind of both about sex, you know, it's fine. Um, so I'm going to do Eros first, and then I will end with the poem called Fire. So Eros is after Akilah Oliver, uh, the late Akilah Oliver, and L.H. Stallings. And uh, Akilah Oliver, I'm indebted to her for her kind of the way she approached syntax, particularly in the She Said monologues. Like, I just read that. I was like, I was like what the heck? Oh, God, yeah. And then L.H. Stallings, um, I was at an event where she was talking about the idea of the, of, of the Middle Passage, like the transatlantic slave trade, operating in the same sort of a way as like a space war, right? Like a, a war through these kind of different resonances of atmosphere. She's much more eloquent and compelling about it. But both of those things come together in this poem. Eros. <clears throat> The whole premise is flaw. The hull, a wood prophylactic for aquatic wood. Can't you feel the motion of the ocean? We sing in millions of mouths. We go deep and sleepless, except it's all someone's wet dream. We are and we is grinding. I'll coin grind. Won't Google that for fear I've made nothing. I'm not afraid of nothing except making it. I don't want to conjure rats, but they're everywhere. When I nibble on my wife's neck, how deep in her is screaming? Do you remember when we fell in? All the mid-tempos tell us rock. Can't you feel the motion? All the slow jams call us to grind. We grind. All the crunk slaps are fucking slavers. Tell me what to do, will you? This isn't about history. My junk bounces athwart me even when I look over my shoulder. I will not conjure chains, but maybe the fuzzy kind from Les Sex Shop. By chains, I mean cuffs. I am not fuzzy about what chains are. This isn't about history. Outside, the ocean soaks the ship's wood on its progress. Whap, whap, whap. That's a wet-ass problem. Fat, fat, fat is the sound of hacked skin. Any doc about slave ships, a leaked sex tape. Any such sex tape, probably a snuff flick. The problem's not the wetness, all you fretting sexists. The Defuna canoe exists. It's that the erotic isn't mine. As in, nigga. As in, Eros is ain't my god. As in, I didn't dream a Gerber baby on the loo tube. Slippery. The next wave gets me wet. This isn't about the future. Teal in some black mouths is murder. Murder in some black mouths is stabbing. Stabbing in some black mouths is pitching. Can't you feel the motion of the ocean? Swells pitching the boat. Set a course for adventure. Sweetest reward. I'm trying to get my genitals in order. They're down here in Ordor. Some of it's mine. That shit isn't strange. Packed in tight. Somebody says, get it up. I'm next on deck to jump to. I drop and give them 20. The, I mean, my man don't like me letting myself go. Slap, slap, slap. Bend over to the front. Slap, slap, slap. Touch your toes. Slap, slap, slap. Get low. I go down in the hall. I'm a candlelit dinner. I'm an hors d'oeuvre and a little something sexy will get slipped on in this romantic darkness. I am the dessert. Insert entendre before you come to consciousness. Can't say consummate without consume. We'll grind it down to coin. They reach into their pockets and linger till they flip the money shot. The rats on my face. If I holler, rats in some black mouths. It's too dim to know whose name I better say. A fetish? A fetish floats a boat. God? Ships christened in his. Won't pray to that or pray to that. Cruise? I can't trust the mouth what spit me out to kiss me, right? Earl some fuckery. Goddamn infants want to screw everybody. This isn't about history. All right, and we will close with fire. Um, I'm, so like fire, just a little bit of, of, of the process with fire. Fire um, used to be perfect timing. See, <laughs> that's why we wait. I've been waiting for that little thing I left in the trash can a couple of blocks up, get some attention. That's another pro tip. Really, it's for art, and that's the most important thing. <sighs> Smell the aesthetics. Um, so Fire started off as a poem in which I was going to be complaining about, um, it's like this old joke, right, where people talk about the difference between uh, gospel music and soul music, right, or spirituals. Like, all you have to do to turn any gospel song into a soul song is substitute baby where you said Jesus. So, you know, like if you just say baby, suddenly it's a soul song, right? Um, and I was writing about like the kind of 
the, bi the, the, the binary between like the sacred and the, and the secular. I was like, no, we gotta think, because if you don't have some of the soul in it, it's kind of just a product, but if you don't believe in the secularity, then you're just like stuck in this kind of like space where you're not actually generating, creating. And that's how the poem worked for like a few years. Like I was like, yeah, that's that. And I brought it back and I was like, oh, okay, let me do that. I was like, that's no, that's not, that, mm, no, that, no, no. It just wasn't working. Um, and so I began to revise it over, um, over the course. And I began to think about what is it about the secular that makes some people reluctant to engage it, especially when they're thinking of sacred music. And it's flesh, right? It's, it's the idea of carnality um, that upsets certain people about that. And at this time, I was going to a church where, where we would, I was in the choir, my wife and I were both in the choir, and we would sing these really pop, like these songs that were just full of spirit. And like, sometimes during the service, like the pastor would like would get up and you know, he would sing a song that was about his relationship to Christ, his relationship to Jesus. And you'd just be sitting there kind of like going like, this sounds like a romantic relationship, right? This, this is very, bod like there's, it's bodily. And I thought that that was kind of beautiful. But then, you know, every third or fourth Sunday, there'd be a sermon. And in that sermon, he would just go in on queer folk, which you know maybe doesn't surprise a lot of people. But it was the act of sitting there listening, like you just sang a song that goes, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There is something about that name. I'm like, that is a love song. And yet you treat the idea of certain kinds of love as totally opposite of what being in this space was. So I wanted to kind of get into that. And this poem is called Fire. Uh, I've read it a lot of times, no lightning yet. Maybe it was all just to get us all in this room <laughs> for efficiency's sake. <laughs> So if there's anybody in here who is pure of heart and pure of thought, there are granola bars <laughs> out there. And you might just want to get one, and you don't want to disrespect the gallery space. So go outside while you eat it, and you know, like, and then come back in in about 10 minutes and go through everybody's wallets and purses. <laughs> like, that's what you should do. So let's see. So this is fire. <clears throat> I was like, it sounds like I'm flexing. This is fire. No, the poem is called Fire. God, we cry because nobody do us like the body. Oh, Jesus, love me, this I. No place low enough to keep me, high enough for when I feel filled with it. I am not ashamed to kneel, not ashamed to sing. When I have that name in my mouth, and O oh, turned O, oh, and I turned A. Ah. I am singing and turnt what I owe to the blood what flowed. What we owe, we owe alive. That body by that spirit, what's flowing by the spirit isn't ghost, lest we ghost it. I, I from the row in the body of or up in it. My body up in my robe. My eye roll up to lift, to wonder from where I get what come. What's ghost isn't spirit, spirit. What guides sopranos keen pierce? It's lit, sweet glow, high enough radiating, sweat before me. What rides high the pierce they make to go inside us is, oh, in this place, desk can't shake, pearl rung, what runnels me, what runs soak, alto, shoulder rock, nobody do us, oh Lord, oh, the treble throat on its dark ladder, what wrestle, come hither, come higher, come lower, what wind rattle rock, that don't rock, that don't roll, what's old to the body of this the blood, what's shed, come quiver, come quaver, climb lower, oh, go down, oh, do I chime. Times enter tennis swears, saying now get happy they got it in them, get it in me filled with what owed, I know it was, I know it was, I know it was the blood, bear down over it a cleft bowed low enough for the tremulous tremor, the things of the spirit in this place, the bases, we come, go down, not ashamed, I, I, to come, go down, oh deep black zenith God, go down, lift up, take in what's licked, sweet body of the body of what's on high, oh, go down, oh, 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 o
know that God, good spirit, low flow, pierce, run, sway, bold. What we owe the body, I see. We sang a sweet body of the sweet body we give. I know it was. What flow in the row, in the body of the things of the spirit? I turn a rock, rock, turn a turn thing, nobody. I know it was. I know it was. My mouth full of sweat. What chime with what I know it was supposed to be, but shed like a skin, like a robe. Oh, I went down to the row in the sweet body of I see, I hear. What said, what said was too ashamed to owe. What flowed from the spirit, I know it wasn't, I know it wasn't. What I see, some said, like a snake, like shame. What I owe, what I owe, when down in the road, the word don't do me. What I do, what I do now. Thank y'all. <laughs> Thank y'all very much. I think I'm supposed to do things now. <laughs>